So, so far, it's been a very interesting meeting. And, I'm, I, and unfortunately, I had to miss a little bit yesterday during the H5 Coro talk um, because we had a, we have our group meeting. And, uh, and so I need to, I need to get back and see the, uh, the recording of that. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good um, and interesting. Yeah. And interesting, interesting discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I want to go back to that because I, I felt like I missed, I got the very first part of it and then I got the last part of it where he was saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, essentially, there is an argument that they want to go, you know, uh, first of all, there should be some stable, easy to understand format. You don't need to implement all features, but well documented, and you really can do it efficiently, uh, which, you know, maybe, but it's it really takes an effort, right? But then okay. the problem is then you, then you have multiple specialized libraries to do things, uh, which is bad but maybe not bad so you know future so essentially hdf5 and we are on the path to start determining those problems uh, because uh, we can do multi screening on the low level and for example uh, right now we uh, tomorrow i believe we will be talking about new feature in hdf5 that uh, gives low level dfd layer uh, see the whole io call and then s3 for example a driver can be easily optimized to issue par multiple parallel calls, but it still will not be very useful until you propagate this mother's rating or some kind of parallelism to the top layers, right? Uh, to the API layers. And once again, it is possible to do, we know how to do it, it's it just time. Um, it, it is, right. mm -hmm. and there was a good discussion between um, Jolie brought uh, that uh, you paint for dusk, right? When you use realization, yeah. uh, your speed comes with the, you know, it, it costs money because you're running all this computational parallel computing and you're using all this huge machinery, which is not available to just application on your client. Right, 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 right. Also, there were some really interesting comments yesterday from uh, John Reedy about uh, Lambda functions. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting too. Yeah. It, it's where you know what, what's going in the group, right? You attend the conference. Oh, you implemented this already. <laughs> 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 I knew he was working on that <laughs> completely. <laughs> yeah. I wish he could do some demo and uh, maybe yeah, we'll, we'll have it more. Yeah. Anyway, I spent a lot of time working on this Lambda. It's a little bit frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it. It's very promising, but it, yeah. it's, just, uh, it's, it's such a different execution environment. Uh, it, it's a bit of a challenge. The thing that strikes me as really interesting about Lambda is its ability to scale up to a large number of computational nodes right, right. and then scale down quickly yeah, without it, having it to go through scale up with like a cluster. But yeah. you know, you're, you're waiting, you know, a, a minute or so for a new machine to come online. Right. With Lambda is like during a request, you you just basically you're spinning up a, a new new thing to deal with that right. request. Right, so that's extremely appealing, but, mm -hmm. but almost everything else about Lambda is a bit of a bummer. Right. John, you did run different experiments, or you just knew from the press, so you didn't have, uh, you showed some numbers yesterday, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But for example, for NREL data set, uh, data sets, I don't remember, was it there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For NREL, okay. <laughs> So what, what about it? Oh, no, no, just numbers using uh, Lambda versus your uh, cluster of HSDS. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lambda is really not in the game uh, performance wise, right? So even though you potentially can scale to a thousand nodes, it's, it's each node is so slow yeah. <laughs> that it's still not competitive to, to a large machine. Yeah. Uh, so right. it needs to work. Also, you had a large number of 500 errors. So were those coming out of S3? No, uh, oh. I, these were just 
things where the, the land function didn't execute. Oh, or wow. who knows why? Uh, right. Because it's, um, hmm. you know, when you, when you suddenly flood Amazon with a bunch of Lambda functions, it can be a little wonky. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but John, if uh, there is no really requirement like real time response, for example, if you're doing some data aggregation in the cloud and then um, even writing that data in the cloud, this may be very useful because you do not need all this uh, machinery right, and right. expensive, right? Yeah, so I, I think that's actually most typical application of Lambda now is not for interactive websites uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. or kind of like a, the, these large data transformations. Um, and, and you can just, uh, the nice thing about it is that you scale up fast and then they, you just can build for the time that code is running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think all solutions are good. Users should have, you know, there are many different aspects of this and mm -hmm. whatever we can provide. From a performant client applications, right? Just off shelf HDF5 or whatever, NetCDF. Uh, and you can access and tools like JIDA, like um, MATLAB. Uh, but then you go more and more performant and more analytics space, which is different story. Mm -hmm. but you need really to run some, like this uh, uh, Terra file aggregation, right? Right, right, right. Interesting. So, it's an interesting discussion. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, we can start the next session uh, with uh, James Gallagher from OpenDAP.